Even or Marcus here, back again with another video, back again with another Oculus Go video. And in this video, I want to cover the upcoming Firefox Reality browser. So at the moment, we're a bit limited on what browsers we can use. We've obviously got the official one, but Firefox are going to be bringing out their reality browser specifically made for AR and VR headsets, and it will work on the Oculus Go. Firefox, as you probably well know, is a browser that's been around for many years. At one time, it was bigger than Chrome, but then Chrome has taken over it and not as many people use Firefox, but it still has a very loyal following. And a lot of people do use it. It's touted as one of those browsers that has lots of extensions and plugins to kind of customize it exactly how you want it, as well as being quite secure. Now, it's only good news that they want to bring that browser to the Oculus Go, giving us more options, giving us some more features and some things that we can look forward to. As I said, the Firefox Reality Browser isn't directly available from the Oculus Go store just yet, but they are working on it and developing it. They have released a version of it on GitHub so you can download it and sideload it to your Oculus Go. I'll leave a link down below to the Reddit post where I heard about this and also where you can download a copy and also the GitHub so you can see you saw all the details and kind of do with it as you wish. I've sideloaded the Firefox Reality app to my Oculus Go. I thought it'd be nice to have a quick look to see what it's about. Home, library store, browser, gallery, search. But once you've sideloaded, the same as every other sideloaded app, if you go into library, go into unknown sources and what you're looking for is this one here Firefox reality so look for that one there may be some other ones that kind of like you may wonder what those are ignore those ones you want that one there so once you booted up the app you're presented with this screen here so as you can see you get a nice sort of starry sparkly red sort of sky I quite like it but you don't get the option to kind of customize that so hopefully going forward we'll have some options around sort of having a, just a black void um, and maybe even the option to upload our own 360 photos I think that'd be quite nice we seem to be sitting on some sort of flying saucer which seems unnecessary but whatever I guess an option to turn that off and on would be quite good you're then presented with this. So we've got sort of a main menu. I haven't changed this. This is kind of how it comes by default. So down the bottom, we have three buttons. The first one doesn't do anything. I'm not sure what it's meant to do, but it looks like some sort of information button, but I've not found a use for it yet. The second one is to put yourself in a, like an incognito mode. So you can do some private browsing and uh, fellas, go to those sites uh, and we'll close that one. And then the third one is a settings button. So you can kind of send crash reports, telemetry, find out what version you got, privacy policy, that sort of thing. Uh, but we'll close that as well. As I say, these options are kind of default. I didn't change these or add these, but you can kind of see down the bottom here, you got a back burn, a refresh burn, a home burn, you got an address bar. You can got, you've got a microphone that you can talk into and kind of uh, dictate some stuff to. And then you've got a full screen button as well, which makes it, full screen. As you can see, it did kind of dim slightly, so at least we've got some sort of dimming going on, but it's not the full black void that we would probably prefer, mainly because it'll probably save a little bit of battery. So we've got some websites we can go to here. Let's have a quick look at BBC. It loads up at a reasonable speed. You can kind of hold your finger down on the, the page, trigger down and kind of scroll up and down. You can use the touchpad, but I find it's a bit sort of quick. Like it kind of shoots up and down. Even I'm, not, I'm hardly, hardly moving it and it shoots up and down. So maybe that can be adjusted at some point as well. Um, but you can kind of see, so we've got some articles. It seems to read quite well. What I would say is one of the good things with this is if you click uh, this little button down here, you get an option to resize. So you can either use these little handles to kind of make the screen bigger and smaller, Whoop. giant screen, uh, or use these side handles as well, bring it in. So you can have this weird small view, uh, but that's up to you. Or there's some presets down here or you can kind of choose one times, two times, whatever. There's no kind of curvature controls or anything like that at the moment. If you kind of make things bigger, it tends to actually make it closer as well, which I think it would be nicer to have a small, a big screen further away rather than a big screen right here. But you know, hopefully that's, you know, it's as I say, it's still early days. So they'll hopefully bring those sort of things in as updates come out. So this all seems to work quite well, but let's uh, click this little button down here. It gives us back our menu and we click the little home button and let's click on YouTube VR. Now I have found that with v VR stuff, 360 stuff, the YouTube stuff doesn't seem to work. There doesn't seem to be any sort of Google Cardboard option or sort of eye option to be able to uh, change it or anything like that. So let's scroll down, have a little look, see what we've got in here. 
<laughs> yeah, 180 stuff, 360 stuff. Uh, most of this stuff doesn't really seem to work, I would say. So if I click on this 360 video here, let's uh, mute it. Okay. See, that didn't work there. I've muted it, it didn't seem to mute. Uh, and then full screen it. And it doesn't seem to want to full screen. There we go. And it's gone full screen, but there's no option to kind of. That's clearly a 360 video. Half of his head either side. And uh, there's no option to 360. If I click on this down here, no 360 option. I mean, let me know in the comments down below if I'm missing something. But I'll show you an, a different app where you can go to called 360 Cities. And that does have the option to go full 360. The pointer's quite nice. I mean, I think I kind of prefer the pointer was kind of a pointed level up. But I do quite like the, the look of the pointer here and, you know, the little line that you get. And it took a little second to load up there. But what you do get is the option on these videos is this Google Cardboard option, which is what you want to be able to view things in full three, 360. So look, there you go, enter VR, and there we go. Although it seems to be a little bit sort of stuttery and not perfect at the moment. Uh, if I hold still, it's okay. Some videos seem to play better than others. Uh, you can't sort of move around or anything like by using your uh, mouse, your, your cursor. You can do that kind of like saying skybox and stuff like that. It's quite useful, but uh, but the quality itself, I mean, where it's not sort of jittering, it's nice. I like it. But obviously it's still early, so it doesn't work ideal. So unfortunately it did just crash when I tried to back out of that page there. So at the moment, early days, but you know, it's promising. So there's the Firefox browser, obviously buggy, obviously a lot of features missing and it's not complete. So you probably wouldn't use this as your day-to-day -day browser, continuing using whatever you've got at the moment. However, the reason why I'm excited is that the developers themselves have gone out on Reddit, have gone out on other platforms and they're actively looking for feedback. So they wanna hear our feedback, they wanna see what we think, what features we want in this and develop it. You make it better, add those features, take our feedback on board and make this a really full-featured great app. I'll leave a link to the Reddit page down below so you can go on and leave your feedback on the app. You can get details of how to download it and stuff from there as well. Somebody even posted a link on there to download the APK directly so you don't have to faff around with the GitHub page. So if you do download the app, leave your comments down below and let me know what you thought about it. What didn't work, what did work, what features do you want to see? What would make this your ideal browser? Same goes if you don't want to download, that's fine. But let me know in the comments down below, you know, once again, what's your ideal browser? What sort of features would you really like to see? And think of the possibilities that we can include here. Let your imagination run wild and let me know in the comments down below. There we go. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. I appreciate it. But a thumbs down if you didn't, that's fine. I'm big enough and ugly enough to take it if you didn't like it. But do let me know in the comments down below what I did wrong and I'll try and do better for next time. Become one of the Remarkables and hit that subscribe button and also that notification bell as well so you know when I next upload a video. Right, that's me done. I'm out. Have a virtual high five. <laughs>